to a brand new episode of Oma Living Show and I'm your host Marilyn Oma Anona. On this episode we're going to be tackling a lot, a lot of things that have to do with entrepreneurship, mental health, mentoring, empowerment and lots more. And on this episode I'm going to be interviewing someone who will do most of the talking because she has played a great role in our society to see that entrepreneurship, empowerment, mental health are all taken very seriously. I'll be right back after the break. Welcome back. So like I said before the break, we have this honorable, distinguished, a woman of substance, a woman of many parts, an author, a communications entrepreneur, a humanitarian, an empowerment agent, an activist and a transformer. Um, I'll leave her to do the introduction herself, but on the show today we have Ambassador Yume IV King. I hope I got the pronunciation right. Well, you tried. <laughs> <laughs> I you always tried. struggle. Yeah. So sometimes when I want to even yeah. tell someone, I'm, I'm like this afternoon, I wanted to tell people I'm going to interview you. I always omit the Yume and just say IV King. Yeah, yeah. But it's always yeah, difficult. Find it difficult. <laughs> so yeah. nice to have you on the show. Yeah, man. thank you for having okay. me. Okay, may we know you officially? Okay. You, you've said almost everything, so <laughs> I'll just add a little bit to that. Um, we am a Ivy King. You know, sometimes I like to live out titles. I just love to be myself. Yeah. yeah. I'm a writer. I have a novel that I published, and I also run an NGO for women, Save Our Women and Girls Foundation, where we do a lot of skills and economic empowerment for women and girls. Because we believe that women are the bedrock of the society. Oh, yeah. And we also believe that if the women in society rise, then society will rise. I believe that True. that's the missing gap in governance because True. the women are still not behind. Yes. Yeah. And then, of course, I, I, I'm a writer. I, I love to write on social media because that's where you find a lot of young people. Yeah. And you can have and an the opportunity is quite to high. influence their minds. Yeah. And also, I'm a mother. And I'm a wife. I'm a mother of four, and I'm a wife. The only wife. <laughs> of course. <laughs> All right, thank you for giving us the honor of knowing you. So, we'd like to know about your empowerment, your charity on Save Our Women and Girls. Okay. You've been doing a lot of empowerment projects for women. Yeah. At least I know about Uyo, I know of the ones you've done in Lagos. Yeah. Um, what would you say the impact level is? Okay, like um, we do the our flagship empowerment program is the Women Empowerment Skills Training. That West, we are okay. planning West already for Calabar, okay. August twentieth to first of September. And that I believe that the impact has been enormous. The pilot edition was in Akwaibom in twenty sixteen, and we had about one hundred and ten. Um, women and girls in attendance. Wow! And it was awesome. But like I keep saying, if there was one thing that happened in that particular edition that really got me very happy was that I got one of my cousins got involved. I got her involved with the training. You know, before then things have been a bit challenging. She was always reaching out to me for assistance in one way or the other. Yeah. So I encouraged her to join the training, which she did, and she's one of our success stories today. Because she has, she was in our soap making class. Okay, and, and she started that, a business. Yeah, she started a business from there, and she has been thriving. You know, she has produced several times over, and okay. she keeps doing that. And we okay. profile some of our girls on our pages online that came through that training, and they are able to in turn help other people. There's a particular girl who is now training coppers. Wow, yeah. that's so good. That's so more like a, you know. I was yes. going to ask. My next question was going to be. How do you check to know that these people don't just acquire these skills mm. and then go back because it's okay. a problem? Yeah. No, one of the things we did was to set up an alumni WhatsApp group. Okay. So we have all the women in the group and then we try to follow, follow up. up on what they are doing. And of course, you know, when you are just trying out something, you make a lot of mistakes initially. True, true. So we are trying to see how we can standardize that alumni group into a full training academy so that anybody that passes through our trainings can be a part of that alumni group and then have the opportunity to because we plan to invite established entrepreneurs to yeah, come in to and come speak to them, them, to help mentor them until they're able to start. And on their own. Yes. Yeah. 
Okay, that's a great one. Follow up is very, very yeah, vital, and that's what most empowerment projects lack. Like, like, but yeah. we're glad that you are going beyond just um, um, getting them acquire these skills yes. to actually making use of these skills and then following up to see how they progress. Yeah. And that's, you know, that's let, me, very let me add something too. Because apart from the skills that they learn, the hands-on skills, mm. we also bring in established entrepreneurs to speak to their minds. Because we're also interested in their mind. So I've discovered that if somebody's mind is not empowered and you empower their hands only, you're just wasting time. It's more like their there's mind, a vacuum yes, their mind, inside. Their minds will always level them to, to whatever level it is. So, okay, imagine a situation where you give somebody like a hundred thousand who isn't used to seeing even 5,000 Naira, you're just punishing the person. Because the person, in no time, that 100,000 will dwindle to 5,000. So you have to first build the person from 1,000 to 2,000 to 3,000. So because it's a micro economy we are playing with here. Mm -hmm. So we, we teach the women that you don't need a million Naira for instance to start a business. You can start your business with one, with even as low as 10,000 Naira course, and grow it course. if you're diligent. Like I brought in this lady, one of our training, Ayo Megobe. Okay. I don't know if you've heard of the Moi Moi woman. Yeah, heard that of her Moi Moi got to the White House. Mm. And she started her business with 1,000 Naira. So I brought her in, that kind of person, you know, to talk to the women and challenge their minds. So that's what we try to do, both the hands empowerment and the, the mind, mental, mental empowerment. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. So the next question would be, what do you think about the social media craze? You know, everyone is all about packaging on social media. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, things are not really done offline. Mm -hmm. What would you have to say about that? Being um, an activist and a transformer, um, a communications person, you know, social media is part of communication. Yeah. What would you have to say about that? How it affects the youth mm -hmm. and in being realistic with their goals? Yeah. You know, like I keep saying, when people come online and package what is not there, people need to understand that these people, there are people who know them offline. So it's the people who do not know them that get carried away. I would tell any young person, don't get carried away by what you see on social media because a lot of it is packaging. I've spoken with, with for instance, with women who have serious issues of abuse in their marriages and then the next minute I see these same women, they are coming online and you need to see the things that they are writing, my boo, my life, my everything. And you are taking a back. I'm, I'm really amazed. <laughs> And I'm not saying that you should come on social media and, and watch your dating in it. Social yeah. media is not a, um, how do I put it now? Some people use it like a psychological therapy. Mm. If not that, you shouldn't come out and pour. If you have genuine problems, there are people online you that you can to. reach out to, you know, and try to sort it. So that's what a lot of young people do not understand that there are so many lies on social media. And you should not follow those lies. They should try to investigate things for themselves where they are stuck they are genuine people also on social of course, media like of i keep saying people um social media has its good side and its bad, bad side, side. for Just me like i've seen a lot of the good side i've connected with so many women that i would not even have been able to reach online and because i behave responsibly on social media i reach out to them these are women that are far better than me do they are far higher than me in society i think because i conduct myself respectively so they also engage with what them, they're interested yeah. in relating. And then we, re we meet offline, that some of them have been invited for my event, and we meet on the day of the event for the first, first time. time. And, and it feels like you've known yourself yeah, for known. Yes, so long one, time. social media can be a force for good or for evil, depending, depending on how, you on use how it. it is used. Yeah. Great, so you had an event last two months, May, in Lagos, okay. um, about teenage suicide. Yeah. I was very interested in that event because I'm running a campaign on yeah. mental health, depression and anxiety. Yeah. So what led you to, to you know, organize such an event? Okay, it's because of all the social media and the reports on media that have been coming in about young people killing themselves over little things that you consider little. little yeah. yeah committing suicide. So it became a really worrisome trend. Like I was speaking with one of my cousins-in-law and she was telling me of a, a young boy who even finished from my own daughter's school. You might imagine that close. And this boy, the grandmother was the one that who discovered his body hanging oh in the house. God. He killed himself. A young boy that just finished secondary school. So you can imagine the trauma of a parent who has lost a child that sure. way and then the reports kept coming, coming. in and then you know i have this friend who is a psychic colorist 
Okay. She, yeah, she she's a psychologist who she deals in the science of color. And and we had a conversation about it that and, and she said, What what can we do about this trend? It's becoming really high and Terrible, low. So yeah. I said, Okay, we could organize an event to highlight the issue so that people are are aware that these things are happening. Because a lot of people pretend that they are not they're happening not seeing and all it. that. Yeah. And so then some people to say it's it a white life. man's thing. Exactly. But it's just happening just at our backyard yeah. and it's very rampant now. So I thought we could do something about it because I believe in personal leadership. Like I keep saying in all my events, I don't believe that if somebody has to call you out and ordain you as a leader. Yeah, everybody true. is a leader. Everyone is a in fact, leader. every follower, trapped in every follower is a leader waiting to emerge. True. So I believe in that power. For you. So whenever I see any problem that I feel is within my power to deal with, I will try in my own way. I, I'm not looking at whether government or I'm not looking at that. In my own little way, how, what can I do to help? Because right now, beyond that event now, we have some things um, lined up for the next school session. Okay. And we want to take that campaign beyond that because some parents are not even aware how they contribute to the of problems. Of course, I was going to ask, my next question is, what would you think the factors that are responsible for this suicide, depression mm -hmm. and anxiety, especially amongst young people, mm -hmm. what would you think or what would you yeah. say are responsible for this? I think parents are also largely responsible because for everything you go into, I believe you need to have the basic knowledge. Let me explain that. If, for instance, a lot of people that are going into marriage took time to study what marriage is all about, I, I, not, I'm not saying it will make that marriage trouble free. It's two human beings coming yes. into quarrel. It will like, make you they will minimize some it. kind yes. of things. Because you have some level of knowledge. So it's the same thing with parenting. There are people that are parenting, they are not bothering to read books, they are not bothering to ask questions, they are parenting blindly when there is a lot of information out there. And then they make their children anxious. Let me bring it even very close home. I have four children and they all have different academic abilities. True. Like my, my son, my son is easily an A student. He's the one that brings home the A's and the B's without effort. Mm. But I have another one, his daughter, his um, sister, who, who is average. She doesn't feel that she must. She's not a. up, up here. Yeah. So their parents are cannot manage that situation because they end up making one child feel, feel bad and less. Bad and yeah. Yes. But I try to make my children see that, look, intelligence is not only academic. No, it's Somebody not. could be intelligent and doesn't have social, social, social skills, skills mm. you know. So I try to make them understand that, look, this is your gift, this is what I'm observing and all that. Mm. So develop that. I make them understand that you came into this world for, to solve a particular problem. What your brother may be out in the world to solve may not it's be different from here. So we don't even try, try to, to, try to it, compare yeah. them and... Yeah, mm. because an incident happened recently in my daughter's school. The, my nine-year-old just graduated from okay. school and then went for that program. And the head girl of the school gave a beautiful speech, beautiful girl. She had won so many prizes already. But when it was the overall best in her set went to someone else, to a boy. And her dad was at that event. The dad went out to give the gift. I didn't connect that this was the father of the head girl. Yeah. And he went on and on, said he was going to give the boy 5,000 naira. He said this boy is intelligent. He Raised them. Okay, good, I'm fine. But he didn't just stop there. He, went, he spoke to the daughter that I told you this boy was going to win. And I saw the little girl was weeping as if her heart would break. This is a girl who just gave one of the most beautiful speeches I've heard. And she won a few prizes. Like you and said, most of these parents are yes. ignorant about certain so, things they do. Yeah, so the girl was weeping. In fact, my husband had to stand up at some point to go and hold her try to talk to her that is not every champion that wins the yeah, true. But there's nothing my husband would say that would make as much Impact sense like, as like if it was dad. coming from her mm -hmm. father. You understand? So I saw a parent who is deviously competitive and to the detriment yes, of the mental because health. Because I was even wondering what happens when my child goes home with him. It will be worse. Maybe it was just respecting the other parents there. So you imagine a girl who grows up under that kind of pressure to fair. always be the best. It's good to be your best and not in competition to another, to another person. person yeah. Because no matter how beautiful you think you are, somebody, somebody is more beautiful. more beautiful. No matter how intelligent you are, yeah, somebody, somebody will, yeah. like I read something that no matter what your ER is, there will always, always be 
and EST. Exactly. Bright, brighter, brightest, brightest, like that. So those are some of the issues that we have. And then they are all relative too. Yes. Because if you tell me that you're an alpha student in school, and mm. at the end of the day you graduate as the best graduating mm. student of your department, mm. and then someone who is average, who was average in school, mm. gets a better job. Yeah. What do you then so do? Life Everything goes out is to balance out yeah. these things. Yeah. Our parents really need to understand that. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So now, next to the um, to the next question, you've done a whole lot, socially communications-wise, you've written books, you've mentored a lot of people. What would you say about the youth of our Bear Nation Nigeria? What would you say about our youths? Okay, well, I, I believe that we have a lot of intelligent young people in Nigeria who are doing an awesome lot, but we also have a lot of them who still need mentor, mentorship, because mentorship is very important in the life of a young person. And sometimes people think that mentorship is only when you reach out to a physical person. You can be addicted to a particular kind of TV show. And that is because of the things that you internalize from what you're watching, from what you're hearing, from the people you're relating to, that also determines how you behave in life. That determines how your life goes. So your friends could be mentoring yes, your friends will be mentoring you. And you don't know. So it's good, that's why it's good to watch the people you are relating with, to watch the things that you're listening to. The company and you yes, keep. the company you keep. So I believe that if any young person wants to turn out well in life, you have to be deliberate about success. And I keep saying this, I don't believe that because somebody, because you know, you keep hearing that foolishness is because somebody is young, yeah, it's the foolishness uh, yeah. of young age and all that. I totally don't believe that. I believe that the Bible says, do not let anybody despise you because you are young. Uh, there are so many examples of young people who are doing so well. well. What made the difference is the information that they heard. So it's important for young people to deliberately expose themselves to good information. Because I, I, I see a lot of things online. You see a young person who, who is talking anyhow to people that have gone ahead of them, insulting them. I'm not saying that if somebody has gone ahead, they're always right. Yeah, yeah, they may yeah, be one or two yeah. things that they do wrong. And even if you want to point it out, there's a way you can do it respectfully. But you see people because they're hiding behind um, keyboards and all that. <laughs> Keyboard warriors hide a lot of things. <laughs> ah, so I think our, our young people, some of them are not quite continent, but well, some are. Yes. Thank you very much. And to the next and final question, <laughs> what would you say about entrepreneurship in Nigeria presently? Okay, Nigeria is. <laughs> It's very, it's a difficult environment for entrepreneurship to thrive because so many things are not just the way it should be. Government is supposed to create the enabling environment, environment for businesses to thrive. And we don't even have that. Let's look at something as basic as light. It's a whole lot of problems. Because if you're running a business in Nigeria, you have to keep buying diesel, keep, and if you calculate what you're spending on the diesel, overhead will kill you, honestly. So, and then looking at even the taxes, all the taxes that business owners have to pay to government to be able to survive, is a whole lot. So anybody that is an entrepreneur in Nigeria has the heart of it. That's why I personally yeah. call them unsung heroes. Honestly. So it takes a lot. Yes. It takes a lot to start a business in this country and, and to sustain make, it. And sustain it. It takes the heart of a lion. So I respect anybody who has been able to do that. I really do. Thank you so much yeah. for coming on the show. It was yeah. nice to meet you. you. interview even as much as I'm used to interviewing people wow this is filled with lots of impact if you're not watching this or if your friend is not watching this please try to get them to watch this every youth needs a mentor like ambassador Ivy King ambassador Uyime Ivy King I don't have to keep skipping the pronunciation of her name I just have to get it right so I've been talking to her she's an outstanding entrepreneur She's an excellent mother, a wonderful wife, 
she is someone who has contributed immensely to the development of our country Nigeria you've heard everything she said she talked about parents actually going out all out to learn how to be better parents by either talking to older parents reading books attending seminars and lots more on mental health she talked about the, 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 the way parents contribute to devastating their kids mentally you don't have to compare your kid to another kid just because he or she has better grades in school kids children every one of us have strengths and weaknesses so help your child help your daughter help your son to find out where their strength lies and where their weak what their weaknesses are you see i i've seen a parent who i fell out with because i have a problem with holding back a child a, a mother was telling her child her own child that her sister is beautiful and she's ugly who does that so these are the things she's trying to say to parents out there please do not compare your child to another child every one of us is unique one way or the other we can never be the same and on mentorship she talked to our youths about consciously choosing your mentors and unconsciously there are ways you get mentored too this is by selecting the things you consume on the social media selecting the kind of books you read selecting the kind of tv shows you watch because these things unconsciously form part of your being she said a lot and it's been a great time speaking with her. Till I catch you next time, my name is Marilyn Oma Alola. Stay tuned.